hey what's up guys and welcome back to making 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 27 of what if naruto was neglected and lost everything remember to get this one to one to like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode over in making 3 of what if naruto was neglected with josh and seal inside of him and i also post a brand new episode over in anime king of what if Naruto was the hope of the Uchiha clan so go ahead and check out that and enjoy guys and remember if you're new go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Enemy King family and thank you for all of your help and support remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replying talking back to all of you and also guys go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Enemy King family I have two, three channels if you're new yes guys one Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click those red subscribe button to become part of the Anime King family. And yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last part we left off, Minato would not stop the exam. Yes, he wasn't going to stop the exam given the fact of the whole ordeal between Naruto and the Hayugas. But he should have because chaos started the next moment as Kisame started everything off by accident. Kisame found himself facing off against the god of Shinobi known as the professor, Sir Tobi Herzen. As the battle started rather quickly, Kisame ended up using a rather massive water technique that swallowed the entire area. Chaos erupted everywhere as everyone thought that it was a signal given, as the stone also made their way destroying the bottom of Kanoha, breaking into the village. The bomber core went away and started to create chaos. Kushina wake up as she saw a note left for her, as Minato was trying to, well, give his life for the betterment of Kanoha, with Naruto being Hokage. But she said screw that as she made her way as she was attacked. She took down all the stone ninjas but there was another one that could literally create explosions from hitting you. As a man hit her in the stomach ass, she should have exploded but her strong. Uzumaki physique kept her in check as her body was able to maintain the explosion, but her insides was ruined. As she was on the ground coughing up blood but someone came and started to heal her as the man went off. Perhaps she wouldn't be dying today. All over chaos started as Minato was trapped inside of the barrier with Aruchimaru who summoned three coffins but Itachi arrived and burned the first one as Jiraiya and Toburama came out of the second one. Toburam was a really more outgoing person than people thought. After all, deception was a key. As the battle started out, as Aruchimaru was completely shocked. It was as Itachi used the Kodomasukami. He had the eye. She saw the eye, which he used the Kodomasukami. As he used the technique to control the second to break out of the jutsu by performing the hand signs. Aruchimaru was now screwed as the second performer jutsu, a rather powerful jutsu as Aruchimaru was affected. As the man started grinding agony and pain. Meanwhile, Naruto was making his way towards her to become found as Gaara tried to slow him down. As Gaara realized that he would have to leave or he would die as he went to go and find Deidara. Meanwhile, Gurin and Kisame was currently facing off against Sertobe. As the battle was carrying on, Sertobe was really getting old for his age. Usually, he could have defeated these two in seconds but now, well, he was an old man now. As the rain started to pour, as chaos happened everywhere, Katsumi found Naruto along with Sasuke as Naruto gave him orders on what to do. As he told her to be safe, she felt happy, knowing that her brother cared about her well-being as he made her way off rather quickly. The battle ensued all over the village as Kiba nearly got blown to shreds with Ino. But Kakashi saw the rain as the explosion stopped. The rain was sapping all chakra and without chakra things was detrimental as Sir Toby dropped to his knees, succumbing to his wounds and his body. Because of old age, without chakra reinforcing his body, his body became weak as the man died. Yes, no longer coursing through his veins, chakra completely cut off from him, he died. As Naruto stood there along with Kisame, as the both of them were going to battle as Naruto's blade was still cackling. 
a literal thunder bolt in the raging, despite the chakra atmosphere being gone, as the both of them move forward to clash against each other. Meanwhile, Minato, in the chaos and disruption, got stabbed by Itachi. Up to this point, no one knew whose side Itachi was on, yet he said a single sentence that he was fighting for the future of Hokage, as Minato's eyes went wide here in that. So yeah guys, so basically as well left off, you guys can switch across the blade straight off yourself, so would you say begin this new episode? Kisame was holding up his blade with one arm. He had to admit, this kid was better than he looked, as Naruto stood there as calm as ever. As he held on to the blade, he had to move in fast and strike. Without chakra, he wasn't sure how hard Sami had to go hit, but the thing was literally alive, as the thing was dripping saliva. It seems like he wanted to devour him. Although, Naruto was able to strike Kisame in the arm, so he couldn't use that arm at the moment. Well, said Kisame, I guess it's 2 to 1. I am not letting you leave, said Naruto. The moment he said that, he ducked. As Kunai flew over his head, he was then punched right in the face as he flipped and skidded back to see a very pissed off Kumu Kunuichi. It was none other than Yujito, as she stood there with the Kumu headband on. Kisame, we have to leave now. With that, she jumped away rather quickly. Told you, I'm gonna give you this win because I'm retreating. Never say I was an honorable person, said Kisame. As he was glad that the Kami of Shinobi decided to take a nap while that chakra, strange thing just came over the area that suppressed all chakra. Because if it was the two of them, he would have surely died. Meijutsu was gonna be fine, and Kojuro too. Well, at least he hoped. Meanwhile, with Gara, it was a few minutes earlier as Gara was crushing. Stone Shinobis after Stone Shinobis because he was helping the Kanoha ninjas, they never wanted this. They wanted to take the Jinjulki, that is what they wanted to give the Jinjulki a better life. But chaos ensued and innocent people were gonna die, so Gara was stopping the bombing ninjas from the hidden stone that was creating chaos everywhere. The Kanoha ninjas didn't seem to mind him because he was helping them, as they were actually fighting by his side, not attacking him even though his headband had a slash in it. Suddenly, Gara felt terribly weak as his sand fell to the ground and he dropped to his knees. Sure, before it had been raining, well slightly, but he hadn't even felt the water but now, something else happened as Gara didn't know what the hell was going on. As Gara focused on the rain, the rain was sparkling, it was like electricity was in each of the drops. At least when his sand crumbled he had been near the ground, as Gara saw it was happening to everyone else around. And the stone shinobis were starting to charge towards him even though they could not use their chakra either but Gara didn't have the physical strength to fight them back. Without his sand, he was a dead man walking. A dead boy walking. As Akuna was thrown and hit him right in the shoulder, Gara felt pain as blood rushed down his shoulder. Yet, Shikaku did not roar. Shikaku did not scream. Neither yell or anything. As Gara was shocked and silent, he no longer had his sand. He no longer had any protection. He no longer had Shikaku in his head. There was nothing but silence. And the upcoming wave of stone shinobis who were still fighting despite the situation. They were out for blood, they just wanted to kill Kanoha Shinobis. As Gar felt another kunai hit him, but he was grabbed. It was none other than Shizune. Shizune saw the child, as she saw the mats of stone ninjas moving and throwing kunais and weapons everywhere. So she quickly grabbed and picked him up. Sinali Sama had turned mad and disappeared, together with Naruto daughters, and she was left behind. After she saw the attack, she quickly rushed over from the hospital and she found this child here. Things were bad, really really bad. Some of the few patients got out of the hospital, but next second it was crumbled to ducks. A massive explosion had brought it down. Lucky enough there was not so many people inside, but those who were left behind had suffered one of two fates, buried alive or crushed to death. Shizune had been outside carrying one of the more critical patients when the explosion had raised the hospital down to the ground. The evacuation had halted and she found herself in a situation to fight to save her own skin. She hated to take lives, but yet she had no choice. The stone shinobis had been ruthless, so she had been worse. The sandman, he had helped them. As Shizune saw when the boy collapsed onto the ground, his sand fizzling out. The healing jutsus also stopped working. The rain was falling harder and harder as chakra was unusable. The few remaining patients had to be evacuated. The roads looked like swamp as the water was gathering up. The rain was pouring down. As she looked towards the small boy, she had to help him. She couldn't just leave him there. He was the one that defended the hospital in the first place. When the wave of first stone shinobis came, except the one that got underground. Yes, they were able to dig underground using some sort of jutsu. As they set bombs all over the air, but the boy 
had tried to protect it, and he helped them evacuate a lot of people, so she couldn't leave him here. Shizune jumped inside, avoiding explosions. Well, there was none. She saw the explosive tags, but they didn't go off, they just sizzled. Without chakra, nothing was happening. Seals, everything was now meaningless. Even healing, everything was gone without chakra. Earlier with Karen, Karen was keeping Yumi quiet and she was also keeping her happy. It was difficult when they were moved further underground and with your so-called grandmother in the same room. Listen Karen, said Snavi, this is not a game. You must understand that this is a point in Konoha history, one that will bring your father to new heights. Achieved through blood, lies and deceits. It would be something dad never liked, said Karen, as she hold on firmly to Yumi. Snavi sighed, at least we could have our last time together. Without Yumi crying, she said. It wouldn't be the last time if you had simply just told dad the truth, said Karen. As Yumi looked up, I need bathroom, she said. Snavi stood up as Karen growled at her. You are not leaving the room, said Snavi, and she's safe with me. As if I'm going with her. What the hell are you afraid of your son? In? And we're just a Jenny and a toddler. Fine, said Snavi. And she brought her towards the bathroom. There was no windows this deep on the ground, so she could not jump through the window and leave. As Snavi, Stood outside the bathroom. A couple minutes later, Karen came out with Yumi in her arms asleep. Before anyone could say anything, strong explosions shook the entire place. As Karen was about to fall, but she kept her hold on her baby sister, holding her tight as Snavi grabbed Karen. Get in now as she pushed her back in the safe room and locked the both of them in. Wait in there, said Snavi. Snavi wondered what the hell was going on the fight. Shouldn't have reached as far. It should have been quelled quickly. As Snavi left the two girls alone. Karen bit her thumb as she had her chance as she dropped on the ground. Okay, theoretically, this would work. Father is gonna have a fit, but he should get us out of here, she said. As Yumi looked at her sister, bloody hand. Apachan, you're wounded. It doesn't matter. Now let's get out of here. As Karen hoped that this would work after her father had been teaching her Fuinjutsu, as she really hoped this reverse something would work. Moments later, the door opened up to show. Minjutsu, who just turned back into human after turning himself into water to get down here. Meanwhile, Snavi had barely reached upstairs. When she arrived, the battle between her former sensei and Kisame was going all out as a massive water dome was there as Snavi was about to go back down. If she had taken time to look in the bathroom, she would have noticed that explosive tags with low pitch noise were set up to go off and they did. With the explosion, the entire pathway was blocked. She had no way to get back down and she had to move as a giant dome of water started to move. As she moved forward and she found herself picking up a guy with blue hair slumped over on her shoulder. Whoever he was, he didn't even seem to have a normal face. Beaten to a pulp by the debris falling on his face. He did have a carry for a protector though. Probably the thing that protected his skull from being crushed in by the stones. When Snaddy arrived towards the hospital, as she was about to make her way there, the thing exploded. Bombs went off, vaporized in the hospital. Snavi was shocked. This wasn't supposed to happen. The sand wasn't supposed to take it this far. The sand shouldn't have been able to do this mess. As she turned and she heard more explosions. Coming from the Hokage mansion, she prayed that it was empty. As she saw chakra chains flicker up in the sky. And she saw them suddenly vanish after another explosion went off. Kushina wasn't the best of mothers, but she was still family. And she didn't want to lose any other family member if she could avoid it. So with that Snaddy quickly made her way off to help Kushina and see what was going on. Meanwhile, Itachi was standing all of it. He heard the chaos, he heard the destruction. As he was surrounded by Anvus, his sword was covered in blood. He was pardoned for all of his crimes recently, so maybe that was the reason why he wasn't immediately killed. Yet he could still hear it, everything going on, but he could not see it. As an Anvu apprehended him, but it wasn't an Anvu though. When he heard the voice, Itachi Uchiha, it was my guy, probably the only shinobi that was going to have an easy way around town without chakra. You have much explaining to do, maybe, but I do not intend to run. But I suggest that you take the advantage while you have it. There is no chakra in a wild radius around Konoha. If you're quick enough, you can stop Urchumar before he escapes. That or help destroy the invading forces. He will seem to know of the jutsu that was used said guy. For once the man was serious, as he was debating what to do. Itachi is eyes. Like he said in a previous battle, he sacrificed his sight for the new Hokage using that technique on the second Hokage and the blood leaked from his eyes. And right now, 
His eyes were blind. He couldn't go anywhere. You will stay here, said my guy. I no longer intend to run, said Itachi. As guy rushed off quickly, going after Orochimaru, Itachi then slowly sat down. If only he had some tea now, then everything would be fine. As he wondered where the people being evacuated, was the sand or the stone in retreat? Who had called that stone to begin with? Danzo? Orochimaru? Kabuto? Someone had to call them, but who? What the hell happened here? The female voice came in. Itachi, what's going on? Asked Yuchito. As she looked at the destruction, trying to get Uchi on his feet. We have to leave. We're pulling out. Wait, is that... You killed the fort? I have to stay here, said Itachi as he slipped. Throwing off his finger, I would just slow you down. Without chakra, you can't carry me, he said. Who did this to you? Was it the fort? Wasn't that supposed to be Archimar's job to take care of him? Yujito's voice had worry in it. Still, she took the ring. Itachi was covered in blood, but it was not his. And the rain was making it difficult to decide if he was lying about his incoming death. Orochimaru, he betrayed us. His sword was poisoned, Itachi said, as his breathing started to slow down. Now, go, he said. I'll avenge you, she said. Sadness in her tone as she rushed off. As Itachi lay down, better to act like a corpse. Until all the loose ends were cut. Quietly, he waited until a set of footsteps came closer to him. Faking your death. Not in my term. Everything went according to the plan. Itachi, eye sockets were opened up and his empty eyeballs were removed. Preparing them for the replacement. Yes, but revenge is hollow, Itachi said. And it leave a bitter taste on the tongue. I told you so. Didn't believe me, huh? But I went along with it, after all. We have our promise, right? Two squelching sounds, the eyeballs of Shisui. That Itachi implanted to use the Konomasukami was destroyed. Better not have that troublesome eyeballs around if I have to quote a Nara said Naruto did did you kill Kisame Itachi asked no but the third he had a heart attack being deprived of chakra after this fight in his old age it was too much you don't seem saddened Itachi said why would I the boy said I forgave him once and yet he did this nevertheless but I did not expect the hidden stone did you no said Itachi Someone sold them the info on the patrols, otherwise, they couldn't have got here, unnoticed. Yeah, I know. I'm pissed tired, and I think I lost my right hand. Sensibility. I still have to go to Patrol Alpha to lead the command. Want to swap, the boy said, with a bit of joking in it. My guy was pursuing Orochimaru. I don't know if he was able to subdue him, said Itachi. Don't worry, oh, and this gonna hurt. As Itachi felt the pain, but he pushed through it. As he blinked. As vision started to enter back his eyes, as he looked around slowly and looked up towards the face of Naruto Senju, Worthing, how does he look like? You look horrible. Are these? Sharingan eyes, said Naruto. Danzu activated only 8 of the 10 on his arm, so I took these on the mark. Not like anyone's gonna miss them, said Naruto, as he helped Itachi up. Well, we have a village to save. Naruto, your daughters, Itachi said. They weren't there, said Naruto. I was too late. And they weren't there. Minjutsu was there and there was blood. Calm down, said Itachi as he heard Naruto's voice. There were three swordsmen. Kojo, did you see him? No. Do you think he got them, said Naruto? We can suspect that. So where are you bringing me, Itachi asked. Oh, I thought of going to the cinema, you know, watch a movie while Konoha burns, said Naruto in a sarcastic tone. As he hopped and used a kunai to slow down his fall against the wall. A pity we don't have chakra. How long will it last? asked Itachi. Until the rain stopped pouring, said Naruto. You know, I actually have a son as well. I know, Tobarama, right? Urchumar said that he wasn't in route when he got there. As Naruto stopped, he wasn't there? No, why? Itachi said. Then, you didn't get him? said Naruto. I thought you had him. You thought I had him? It was my only clue. You are Hirzen. Hirzen has a safe house empty. And if Urchumar doesn't have him, then who the hell has my son? Naruto, we have company. I don't care, said Naruto. As he turned his gaze towards the sand ninjas, two of them, wounded, probably trying to reach a rally point. They came to a stop when they saw who was standing there, and they stood still. Warn your brethren, sand scum, said Naruto. The second coming of the second has defeated your brethren. I have mastery over the chakra in your coils. Now run, and never come back. One moment Naruto was weak. Pathetical and carrying Itachi. The next, he was standing tall. Itachi leaned on him, 
the right in his hand, tackling deadly as the two ninjas turn heels and run. Now, if I can convince someone from the stone as well, we will be set. His legs wobble as he crashed down, as both him and Kache sat here. Do you really plan on going to Rally Point Alpha? You're in no condition to fight, Ikachi said. I just need to be there to sound the charge. Not to- Itachi! A voice yelled. As Sasuke seemed to appear out of nowhere. A battered Sasuke with a kuna in his hand that was covered in blood. Dry blood, just like his clothes. Yeah, I'll definitely hit the half a point, said Naruto. Sasuke, you and your brother catch up. No killing each other though. I have a village to conquer back. But Sensei, um, we- it Itachi raised his hand and bombed Sasuke right in the forehead. As Sasuke looked towards his brother, who just their friend to come and sit down so he can listen. As Naruto moved off slowly. Rally Point Alpha, the park was in front of the Hokage Monument. That meant the refugees were safe as long as no one got through. It was easy for Konoha to hold the line. The Hidden Stone could not use any explosive because they simple fizzled out because there was no chakra to use to activate them. Things were going up and down. At first, the Kyubi power was felt and the shinobis were being ripped apart and that raised Konoha morale. But then, an Anvo reported the death of the Hokage and Urchimaru escaping. No one even knew what was going on or who killed who. One moment, the barrier was filled with water and lightning. The next moment, Urchimaru was cursing and screaming the Hokage was down. No one knew who killed who. The Anvos couldn't even stay there as they had to engage the private personal bodyguards of the sun. Shikaku had quickly listened to Naruto's suggestion to meet this rally, Alpha Point, as it was the best way of protecting the people. But Shikaku believed that Naruto had planned it. As by accepting his orders, it was like he was following his command. It was just an afterthought, but more and more ninjas came, saying that the rebirth of the second had come to help them. Yes, he came to help them and send them here to protect the Alpha Point. Shikaku theory was no longer sounding crazy at all. There was no sign of the Hayuga branch family, or the Hayuga head, or the heiress, or the Inuzaka matriarch. Even the Yamnaka girl was missing. Much to Inuichi dismay, Choza had been hit hard to hear about his son's death and was mostly unresponsive. The man was a mess and he was faulting himself, something that Osama was also doing as well. Shikaku was not idiot though. Someone had to give the route to the patrols. The stone patrols, someone had to give them the route and were to hit first to cause more damage. A spy, an inside man in Kanoha. But they had to find it out before it did more damage. All in all, they hold the line strongly, but the rain was not going away anytime soon. He heard gasp as he turned to see none other than Ruto, the second coming, as he watched him, as Naruto had the Hokage's hat, the Raijin blade in hand. Might I ask what this new action is about at Chikaku? The fourth Hokage is dead, said Naruto. While I'm sure I might be overstepping bounds, you have a choice, either we go out there to reclaim the village with me at the head to increase morale. Or we stay here and bicker for next Okage and wait while they destroy Konoha. The sand line is in disarray, I took care of that, and I'm pretty sure that it will be pulling back at any minute. Sir Toby is dead. At that, the shock flew through the entire line that was near them. But I already took care of avenging him. Roars of cheers echo beside him. We can't have someone as Kohar was shut down by Naruto. Oh, shut it, Yandy, said Naruto. We don't need bickering. Right now, we need actions. This is a mere formality, name me. Fukage, and we will reclaim Konoha, refuse, and I will have to name myself that, and destroy the hidden stone front myself, reclaim the village, and mention to the daimyo your instability of forming a plan while the village burn. That was enough as the shinobi start to roar out the name of their new Okage. This had been a display of strength, a careful action, a precise motion. All of the people nearby was the ones that Naruto saved. Jonis come together and call his name. Naruto for 5th Hokage, and that was enough. The Stone Shinobis only had Kuna to fight with. When they saw the army of Konoha Shinobis rallying, and when they saw that Thunder Blade wreaking havoc, they started to fall. One by one, they were sliced down, they were severed, they were destroyed. Out of the thousands of Stone Shinobi, less than 300 returned home with severe wounds. To tell the tale of what happened when they tried to take down Konoha with several other villages and yet so many ninjas coming together with their great force and yet they were pushed back they were taken down the San Shinobi surrender rather quickly the ones that remain 
Hearing that your Kazakage was dead, what Urchimar did, in the end, the sun was setting as rain came to a stop. As a crimson view washed over Konoha, Konoha had won with the help of their new Hokage, but they were not completely unscathed. By the end of the day, everyone gathered. As they were in the Count's room, we lost good number of men, civilians, and buildings, said Naruto. I know many in the Count's believe I wrestle my position here as Hokage without any actual clan support. Many of them look at him with a serious expression, hinting that yes, they thought that much. However, what Konoha need right now is a strong Hokage, and the shinobis that bled and died today need to be avenged by a strong Hokage. To be strong, we must be united under the same banner, said Naruto. That is why we will now formally vote whether or not you want me as Hokage, since I may not represent myself and my clan. Neji Senju, although young, will represent the Senju clan, said Naruto. The Hayuga representative wins, as he snarled a bit but he did not say anything. He had seen the power of the Senju leader. He didn't want to end up being crushed against a wall. There is little to say, Homura said, after that charade. There is nothing we can do but accept you as a fifth Okage. Refuting that would show us as weak, and we cannot have weakness after the display of the day. We are probably gonna lose standing with various nobles, and we might risk a civil war if we vote for someone else. I say we need someone older, someone more experienced, Ahika Elder said. Someone that can actually talk rather than destroy. Shut it, you old man, said Tasumi, as she barked at the Hayuga Elder. I say it's about time that we got someone with balls. No offense to the third or the fourth, but they were big softies. And look where that got us. If it was not for the Senju clan, the hidden stone would have reduced us to rubbles. By the end of the day, Inuzaka-san bring out something that I want to discuss. Was any of this planned? And if so, how? Said Chikaku. A mere contingency, said Naruto. I had planned. In case the main family of Taiga tried to attack my family during the exam, ordering them that the first sign of trouble they should head towards the Senju safe house. Once they were safe and I passed by, I found out that the stone was in a perfect situation for me to ambush them. Luck, is that all you're good at? A Hokage need diplomacy, said the Haiga elder. Something slavers have no right to say, said Naruto, as he glared towards the elder. Wasn't it a perfect display of diplomacy? Of freeing people from your clan without disrupting or going above the laws subtlety is a bitch when it hits you in the back, right? Anyway, we are pretty much in clear of keeping you as a fifth, even though you have no proper training for it. Stripe underwear, said Naruto, as Koharu looked away. Although, being a senju, you are trained in such arts, so I guess we have nothing to worry about. What? The Hayuga said. He's trying to bully his way through the council. As Naruto rolled his eyes, you should address the Hokage properly, said Inuichi. As he looked towards Haiga Elder, Inuichi was broken when he heard that his baby girl could not be found anywhere. But yet, he found out that Inu was currently in the Senju safe house. He was so happy, as she was brought there to keep her safe. A contingency plan planned by Naruto that kept his girl safe, and for that he was grateful. Still, the Haiga said, I fear for the safety of my clan. He cannot be. They were cut off as Mikoto rushed inside the room. As Nerd looked towards the woman perplexed, as everyone turned towards her, they thought her missing the console was because of problems, or that she got wounded or something. I express my gratitude towards the Senju clan, and defer my voting towards him for the rest of the day. Scrap that, the rest of the week. Sorry, she said, as she rushed back out. Senju san is loved by the people, and... He's loyal. Four Konoha through thick and thin. He gets my vote, said Shibe. As Naruto nodded towards the man. What are we gonna do about the stone and the sand? Asked Choza. As the big man was still in his armor. The sand was used. And they are as much victim in this as we are. However, they will not easily be excused. They will be reprimanded before. They are forgiven. That and Konoha will benefit to several win new users. Since we have so little. In our village. However, the stone attacked without reason. With force and strength and without any mercy, they aimed a blow not to destroy us, but to make us suffer. They target the hospital, the orphanage. And for that, they will pay until the last of the stone population choke in their own blood. They will pay until even rocks start to bleed blood, said Naruto. The Akimichi clan is with the Hokage, Choza said as he clenched his fist. Choji would be avenged no matter what. 
There are still some clans missing, like the Uzumaki and Namikaze. Technically, Kushina and Namikaze account for noted said Naruto cutting off the Hayuga that spoke. If it's not the majority, then we will wait. Now, for the rest, he said, as the rest quickly voted for Naruto, as he got the Uchiha and Neji got the Senju for him, so he got the majority vote. Nara also followed because it would be rather troublesome to find someone else. Inuichi was already there, and Inuzaka as well. So when the elders voted as well, it was set in stone. Now it's official. Let us rebuild the village, said Naruto. As the Haiwa got to his feet and stood in front of Naruto, I will not carry on with the charade to have you sit in that seat, the man said. As Naruto looked towards the man dangerously, fall in line, he said. No, the man spat. You will not be our Kokagi. Kakashi, kill him, said Naruto. The next moment a blade was implanted in the Haiwa's throat. Kakashi, who was in the shadows of the other Anvus, went back into the shadows. Anvu, Cat and Wolf, warned the Haiga clan that their clan representative has been executed for treason. Tell them that act of insubordination or treason will make me think that they are trying anything with a coup, and it would lead to bloodshed. And with those words, the first action as the Hokage for Naruto was one of blood. The next morning, it was with tired eyes as Naruto reached to the Senju compound. Where he was greeted by a lot of people. Neji was the first one. Sensei, or should I say Hokage Sama asked Neji. As Naruto roughly is here, I pulled the all nighter. I'll need some time to take care of the children as well. I'm sorry, I couldn't go. It is not a problem, Naruto Sama. One of the older Hayuga, Noah Senju, spoke. You should read the rest. Please, the Sama is making me feel old. The sign will suffice. We understand, but we still wish you the Sama for a sign of respect for all that you have done for us, the Hayuga said. As others nodded as well, as Naruto relent, but he was exhausted now and he had to get some sleep. There was many things to do, the rebuild of Knofa, many people talked to him. With Karen and Yume, huh, I didn't expect this, said Karen. Me neither, the chameleon said as Ryu looked towards her, still, want to sign a contract? As Tokich turned, what, no question or nothing? Well, the master descendants get a right of trust to sign the contract. Sure, more stated. Questions were fun. Shut it, Tokich. Said Ryu. Can we be sent back, Karen asks. Oh, my mean. Dad is gonna be worried. It will be best you wait until there's someone one of us. We have already sent a chameleon back. Okay. Is there something to eat for you, man? Apples are our favorite. Okay. I will search the land. Sure, more. Stop it. There's no apple trees around or anywhere. We have smoked fish, though. As Karen sighed, at least they were safe. She wanted to make sure her father knew that. Elsewhere, Orochimaru saw him as not return, said Kimimaru. Nor has Kabuto san as he looked at the boy that he was put in charge of. Oh, so when do I get my eyes? Soon. How are you liking the toys, Toburamakan? Asked Kimimaru. As the boy liked him a lot. Thankfully, because he had no eyes, he had no idea he was playing with bones. Time skip. It was a light tap on his forehead that woke Naruto Senju up as he looked at the tiny chameleon that was tapping on his forehead that managed to get all the way out here without getting squashed as the chameleon told him his message with a set of clicks of his tongue. A second later Naruto was up, although a bit wobbly on his legs, but he was up as the chameleon poofed away as Naruto made his way where he came up on the kitchen where a woman was as she had the white eyes. She was preparing him breakfast. Naruto Sama, she said. As her forehead was out there in the open, it was something to take pride of showing that there was no seal on it. Once a member of the Hayuga now, I send you. I hope I didn't wake you up, she said. No, um, my name is Joko, Naruto Sama, she said. I took the charge of preparing your breakfast. Oh, thank you, said Naruto as he sat down. He had a happy smile on his face. His daughters were fine. His clones had been out searching. He should have checked with the chameleons. He just hoped they had slept somewhere warm. Wait, were there any beds at the chameleon's place? Still, that was enough. Please enjoy. As a woman placed breakfast in front of him. As she would seem nervous. As she wanted to know if he was going to like it. As Naruto beat down the food. It's good, he said. You're a good cook. Thanks, Joko-san, he said. Oh, it's... You can call me Joko, Naruto-san, she said. Are you okay, said Naruto, she was shaking. I, I'm sorry, um... Calm down, said Naruto. I don't bite. I don't hit. 
and I'm not like one of those other pricks. But if you don't tell me what's wrong, I can't do anything about it, he said. As the woman started to cry, Hey, what's wrong, Senorita, as he moved closer to her? It's just, you're too much, he said. You're too kind to be real. You went against the clan to free us, and what if this is a dream, she said. I just, I... As Naruto did what he always did when there was a crying female, even if she was one or two years older than him, he roughed her here. Hush, next time, pinch your cheeks. If you have any doubts that is a dream, said Naruto. She nodded, with a small blush on her face. She was being petted on the head. Good, thank you for the meal. Don't wait up for me tonight, said Naruto. There's a lot that I have to do, so I'll probably be extremely late. As Naruto stepped outside, a group of 8 and 9 year old kids were happily playing with a ball. It was a bit sad that younger ones could not go outside yet because it was to avoid accidents with the main family. He didn't trust the Hayugas to not use the cage of our seals on 3 years old. So until the kids grew to the point where they could safely have the procedure done, seeing that it involved removing their eyes, they would have to stay inside. Sensei, as Neji rushed towards his teacher, dressed in a senju outfit, the color was dark green. Neji, was it your idea about the breakfast in Naruto? Well, I thought you'd be sleeping till noon. That is when the funerals are. But if Junko-san wasn't... It's fine, Neji. It's fine, said Naruto. It turns out my older daughter is too smart for her own good. She managed to perform the... Reverse. Summoning circle. Guess I'll have to up her phone to lesson now. She's getting quite good, said Naruto. As Naruto performed hand signs and slamming sign down, summoning Ryu. It took him a moment to arrive because he... Get the passengers. As the chameleon poof inside. Huh, I got to tell the others. As Naruto's were in the hat, we got a Hokage as a summoner. Oh man, this is precious, right? You said. As Naruto sighed, please don't tell me that you. Oh, yeah. As he opened his mouth, as Karen came out with a disgust look on her face, as a chameleon placed her inside of his mouth, as she was holding on tightly to Yumi. But that is when she saw her father in his Hokage robes. As Ryu and Nage left the family alone, as Karen rushed over with Yumi, as Yumi jumped on her father as he picked her up, as Karen hugged him as he hugged her back, as Karen felt his aura, it was once again kind and it was warm, as Yumi hugged him tightly, she didn't want her father to disappear again, she missed him, dad, I was so scared, there's something I need to tell you, as Nurti kissed her on her forehead, hey, Yumi said, as Nurti kissed her as well, as she started giggling, I know, I know, said Naruto. I was planning on being there in the exams, but everything turned to hell. I told Neji everything, said Naruto. As you can see, I'm the new Hokage, he said. I have a lot of place to be today, but Neji will answer all your questions, he told her. Can't we come with you? Karen asked, giving him the puppy dog eyes. I kind of invented that jutsu, said Naruto. As he gave her a hug. Don't worry, we will talk, he said. I will never let anything happen to you guys again. I will never let you guys get taken away ever again as he held on to the both of them. As Yumi started to mess with his hair, as he placed her down gently. Talk to Neji, he says he looked towards her as she nodded. And if you want, the Hokage's tower, the door is always open as he smiled at her. Now, be good. Our family has extended since the last time you were here. But you will understand soon enough, he said, as he gave the both of them another kiss. Before, he made his way off, as Yumi pouted, Apachan, when is dad coming back? Soon, said Karen, as Karen turned her head as she heard, children, as she took Yumi's arm and went around the corner, she saw children playing, what the hell was going on? Time skip, precisely, exactly what would happen in an attack like this, many things got destroyed except for the paperwork. That was still completely fine, not even a single scratch. Thousands, thousands of papers to look at. As Naruto sighed, and the casualty list, people that was missing in action, they were now found dead. They were buried under the rubble, especially people at the hospital. Hokage-sama, your visitor, Sector spoke. Let him in, said Naruto, as he already knew it was. As Osama entered, Hokage-sama, he said. As Naruto motioned for the man to continue, a problem came up that would have been overlooked because of the casualties, but some children were kidnapped and brought outside the village during the battle. Kidnapper, said Naruto, are we sure it's not casualty of war, or buried under the rubble? At first glance, it might look like that, 
but Kuno Hamru, my nephew, and two of his friends from the academy, they were seen entering one of the refugees' camp, but they didn't come back out. Wait, are you implying that someone knew where the refugee camp were, managed to enter them, kidnap children, without anyone noticing? You realize that's impossible, right? Osama Rina Hunter is here. It seems so. But that is it. They are missing children, and they can't be excused as casualty of war or buried under the rubble. First, let's clean all the rubble. If we don't find them amongst the dead or living, then we can put it to the kidnap. Konohamru might have gone outside to help. He's a kid, right? Kids do stupid stuff like that and probably got wounded. And he's in one of the hospital tents. I understand. As the man nodded, as Naruto spoke, Choji was a good shinobi. More importantly, a good boy, said Naruto. But with the upcoming times, I'll have to fill in the squads. Can I rest assured that you will do what you can to make the new team work? Yes, Hokage-sama, said Asuma, as he was dismissed. As Naruto took all the papers that he had to sign and form them rather quickly, as he used his master over water, let the ink sink right through with his signature on it and signed all of them. That was a better way to get things done. And the ones that needed to take care of, he burned them. The ones that were unnecessary, he did not. Took a second glance at them as he had to go towards the mission room, where there was nothing but chaos inside. Hokage-sama were in a bit of a predicament, Haruka said. As Naruto saw, the predicament was rather large. I hope the missions have been divided by ranks and Naruto as he moved towards the pile of B and A. Summon on those that are free. They will enjoy doing B rank assassinations, I suspect, said Naruto as one of his guards that were shadowing him disappeared. Man, all the ranks around Konoha are suppressed until we can clean all the rubble. Send the Genin team that have completed 20 D ranks on C rank once. Possibly, escort missions, S ranks, have been suppressed for the following month. We need to get back in strength. Losing. One of our shinobis is unacceptable until we recuperate. But sir, what about the A rank at Chonin Axe? Have the free Jonis complete those solos. Send messages to all of those people who are on leave or rest or simply wasn't here to come back and take missions. Yes, Hokage Sama, they said. As Naruto turned to leave, he had a lot to do. As someone flashed beside Naruto. So, you've made it. Said Kakashi, how do you feel? To be Hokage? Stressful, said Naruto. As he waved at a few people look at him with awe and respect. Or, Karen-chan and Yumi-chan are right. Asked Kakashi. Indeed they are, said Naruto. After praying the entire day yesterday that they were fine, I found out this morning that they were. Strange way of praying. You mean killing people, said Kakashi. There's a cult that do such things, said Naruto. Not that I'm interested, but I had to occupy my mind, said Naruto. As Naruto stopped right in front of the Ichiraku stall that was destroyed. As anger filled Naruto's soul, the depths of his soul, they had no right to take him away. They had no right none the old man never did anything wrong he was always kind nice he was there for him when he had nothing as naruto was gonna make them pay by the time he reached close enough to grab the tishikage's throat the hidden stone would have long burned he would break down the land of earth he would slaughter them down to the last man down to the last child they will all pay and when they asked what brought forward such cruelty the answer would be simple they killed the wrong man. Naruto, said Kakashi, calm down. You're scaring the people around us. As the ground under Naruto was cracking, unknown to him, as Naruto took in a lot of breath before releasing, his mind was being bottled with so much emotions right now he had to calm himself before he literally explode. First, they had to rebuild. Blood could wait. As he turned with a fake smile, trying to keep the people at ease, he walked off with a nod. The rubbles had been removed by now, a lot of them. Little that remained could not hassle people that much. As he opened the flaps of the tent, as they were all connected, as he pushed onto the larger rooms, as there was nothing but chaos inside. After the first few days, one recovered, or they slip into a coma, or they die. Those were the three outcomes in any given hospital. The better equipped the hospital was, the better it turned out to be. As Nurk looked around as he saw, the familiar, blonde, ponytails, certainly not here and right now. They needed her. She was one of the top medics. Kakashi, have the medical packs for the emergency. Distributed, said Naruto. I'll stay here and see if I can help. As Kakashi flicker away, noting that he should have been called Inu instead of his real name. As Naruto indeed helped. After all, he knew medical ninjutsu. As the medic ninjas thanked him. As some of them were literally exhausted about to drop. 
they had been working all night. But still, no matter how much chakra one possessed, there was a lot of wounded around. Sensei, as Naruto turned, and there was Kiba. Half of his face bandaged, he was in a bed. You look like a mommy, said Naruto. Yeah, my eyes are both fine. The guy was in a hurry. There was a lot of people to handle. The Kiba, he looked around. But he said I shouldn't fall asleep. So I was not given a bed, said Kiba. I was fine in the compound. But Neji got worried about the ones that were injured. Ino is here I suppose then, said Naruto. I heard from her father that she was at the compound. So I suppose he brought her here as well. As Naruto's hand started to glow as he placed it on the side of Kiba's head. I think they're all around. A lot of them have deceased family members. A lot of people die, Sensei. Um, is my sister? I don't know, but if she isn't, I'll tell her that you worried about her. Don't waste your breath. I think she pulled through quite fine. I heard Katsumi is in extent. I heard her mother got hit pretty badly. I suppose I'll go have a look, said Naruto. His reply was not cold, but it was indifferent. He would be more worried about Katsumi, not Kushina. Oh, and congratulations, Ukage-sama. Thank you, Kiba, said Naruto. In the next tent, as Sinade had her hand covered in blood, the two blood bags were empty. As Sinade was working the woman's stomach, Katsumi was holding onto her mother's arm. It was Kushina Namikaze that was lying in the bed. As Sinade saw the Hokage room, she was in the hospital the entire time, in the tents. She had no idea what was going on. Minato, where the hell were you? She said, as Katsumi looked up. But it wasn't her father. Minato, said Sinade, as she looked at the face. Her eyes hardened as she returned back to the task. The four Tokagi, Minato and Mikasi, died yesterday. In the battle with Urchimaru, said Naruto in a whisper. As Naruto looked at the situation at hand, I think it was you who told me, in case of medical emergencies, triosis, had to be performed, right? I'm not gonna let my remaining family die, Naruto, she said. As Katsumi was shocked, did her brother just tell her grandmother to let her mother die? You have already used the infant Kai on one patient, said Naruto. Even if you stabilize her, how many more will die because you concentrate on her alone? As her hand dropped on Sinai's shoulder, as something spasmed in her body, as she collapsed unconscious, take her towards a prison. She's being charged with kidnap of clan children. As Katsumi stood there shocked, her mother was gonna die. Her mother was gonna die and she couldn't, as she felt a hand dropped on her head, as she saw a glowing green hand placed on her mother womb. Stay still, I'm saffing some of your chakras said Naruto. Snaddy did most of the work, but if she had gone on she would have died and Naruto saw that. But Snaddy wasn't focusing on that, her chakra was so low that if she had stayed, a moment later she would have dropped dead. Big brother, please save mom, okay? As she watched, as her brother stood there, as a few minutes passed, as Naruto removed his hand from her head, she's stable now, he said. Go to the Senju compound and tell them I send you, and go get some rest, said Naruto. She looked up towards him with a wide smile. Go on, hop hop, he said. As she nodded, after she left, he looked down. You're alive because I bear no grudge against my sister. But that is all, Namikaze, said Naruto. His chakra reserves were once full again after healing. So much people in the tent, and he could help more people now. Hours later, as Naruto stepped outside, as he stood there, just looking, in nothing in particular until someone walked towards him. As she was walking with the help of wooden pole, her left leg seemed to be broken as Naruto turned his head and looked towards Anko. So, you're Hokage now, huh? She said with sadness and guilt. But guys, be in subscribe right here. If you want the next person, do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm over now. See you guys soon. Peace.